and in return, all I ask is that you survive at least 52 minutes. X-Men, top 12 most disgusting and weirdest mutants ever. In the universe of the X-Men, most people see all mutants as belonging to some category of oddity. Mutants are widely regarded by fans as super cool and powerful, and many want to emulate their favorites. However, while some mutants such as Jean Grey and Wolverine can avoid harm because their changes are not visible, many others are not so fortunate. Not all of us can blend in so easily, Beast told Storm in X-Men The Last Stand. You don't drool on the couch. Beast isn't the strangest mutant to join the ranks of the X-Men either. There have always been mutants who are just plain strange to some degree. Take for example Toad, one of the X-Men's first opponents and a fleeting ally, and is nothing more than a question mark in evolutionary terms. So many cancellations. With the mutant gene manifesting itself in people all across the world, a few mutations that are less practical and more circus-like are sure to emerge. We've compiled a list of the X-Men's strangest and craziest and perhaps most perplexing characters. For a period, Marvel was pushing mutants into its comic books, which resulted in some rather strange inclusions. There's something that can perplex almost everybody, whether it's a bird that can't fly, a tunnel dweller who shoots bones from her skin, or a green blob. Here are 12 of the most bizarre and quite frankly most disgusting mutants to ever join the X-Men. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. No girl, no girl, yes girl is a better way to describe her. No girl, aka Martha Johansson, may be one of the strangest mutants to ever grace the halls of the X Mansion, but she's also one of the fiercest. The human extracted Martha's brain and kept it alive. Martha's past is unknown, but as a teenage mutant runaway, she was abducted by the human a human supremacist gang. John Sublime, the company's founder, had her brain removed from her body and kept it alive in a capsule. Sublime used medicines and syringes to keep her under his control and utilized her to subdue his opponents, the pair Cyclops and Emma Frost. They were eventually able to break free and they also helped to free Martha. Following her release, Martha exacted her vengeance on Sublime by causing him to tumble to his death. If a floating glass jar containing a fully functional mutant brain isn't enough to scare the bad guys away, no girl's mutant ability surely will. She has the ability to take control of other people's thoughts, as well as inhibiting mutant abilities and being telepathic. She's virtually always accompanied by Ernst, who she became friends with after enrolling in the Xavier Institute, and he usually speaks for her. Martha is a disembodied brain who needs to be injected with medical fluids on a regular basis to stay alive, and it is this clearly distinctive trait that makes her so strange. In fact, if you've ever seen a human brain up close, you'll notice that it's rather strange to look at with all the curls and ridges. Honestly, gives us the shivers. To compete in this week's exciting episode of Mojo's Hunting Ground! Mojo. Mojo was a member of a species of spineless beings from Mojo World, a planet named after him in a pocket universe known as the Mojoverse. Waves of energy or television signals from another space-time continuum strewn throughout their chronology and gradually drove the race nuts. Images of frightening demon-like entities assailed them. Because of their inability to stand erect, Mojo's race could not evolve much until a scientist named Arise produced exoskeletons which allowed room for a rapid technological revolution. Some members of the race, however, refused to use them and coined the term spineless ones. Instead, they moved their bodies using motorized platforms. They also demanded a slave race to perform all of the chores they couldn't or wouldn't be able to accomplish. I am a genius. Get Mojo the X-Men! He is a mutant who has clashed with the X-Men on multiple occasions, such as when he wanted to make a documentary on them, or when he wanted to control them, so he simply made his own version of the X-Men and called them the babies. What makes him so gross and disgusting, however, is his physical appearance, which is literally a large fleshy blob moving around like an amoeba. Sugar Man. Sugar Man was in charge of the human labor camps in the Pacific Northwest, particularly the core, which housed tens of thousands of people. He was a skilled geneticist with a lab in Niagara Falls who mistreated his slaves on a regular basis. He has an indeterminably long tongue that can pierce practically anything, including stone, steel, and even gaseous or liquid entities. Size and mass alteration, he can also change his size and mass. If he loses mass, it is sent to an unknown location, most likely an extra dimensional space, and he shrinks. It's unclear how long it will take him to return to his original size. 
His altered metabolism allows him to recuperate quickly from injuries, even those that would normally kill him. For example, he managed to avoid being crushed by Colossus's boot. He also regenerated after being beaten to death with a metal pike by Karima Shapindar, beaten up, stabbed with multiple pieces, and was left for dead by Callisto. Sugarman is also an expert in the field of genetics. He even invented the above-mentioned mutant bonding procedure. The fact that he has four arms, a mouthful of razor-sharp fangs, a very long tongue, and a big head for a body is what really sets him apart from all the others, making him quite hard to miss at a glance. Shadow King The Shadow King, according to legend, is a multiversal incarnation of humanity's dark side, spawned by the first nightmare. When the mutant Amal Farouk's power grew, he used it to enslave everyone around him, feeding off the darkness in their souls, and covertly uniting them with the Shadow King, who had been shifting from host to host since humanity's beginning. The Shadow King is a multi-universal ethereal entity that manifests as a tendril of its bigger self in each reality necessitating the existence of a host body in the physical realm. Shadow King is a powerful telepath, so powerful that he has been dubbed a real Omega telepath. Shadow King, according to Storm, is the most powerful telepath on Earth, with the exception of Charles Xavier, and has easily taken over the brains of strong-willed persons such as Gentle and Black Panther without their awareness. He's also proved he's capable of controlling high-class telepaths like Marvel Girl and Psylocke using his mind. He can only be harmed as an astral form by attacks that can harm such a form, such as psychic strikes or the use of certain magical weapons. He has proved that he has the power to survive even after his physical body has died. While on the astral world, Shadow King has the ability to possess other entities. Although he has the ability to telepathically affect a large number of people, he usually picks one host to inhabit. Farouk's host body successfully transforms into his form. His abilities have the ability to physically restore injury to the host. He gains more power on the physical level by acquiring a host, but he also becomes susceptible. Killing the Shadow King's host can disperse his astral essence, making it difficult for him to manifest his astral form again for months or even years. Toad Mortimer Toad Toynbee has been around for so long that it's easy to overlook his bizarre transformation. He originally appears in X-Men number 4, making him one of the X-Men's oldest opponents, though far from their most dangerous. Toad seemed to almost de-evolve into an amphibian-like existence as other mutations evolved. Mortimer Toynbee's childhood is shrouded in mystery. He was abandoned by his parents as a malformed infant of English descent when he was so little that he had no recollection of them. He became an experiment for Amanda Mueller's Black Womb Project in El Malvador at some point. Mueller wanted to study how Toynbee's natural development would go after classifying him as a mutant reject owing to his faulty genetic template. Toynbee was eventually placed in an institution where he was often bullied by the other children who regarded him as a freak owing to his ugliness, strange body, and leaping skills. Toynbee's learning abilities were harmed by his loneliness and the constant abuse that he had suffered from. He has extraordinary leaping powers, flexible bones, and an enormously long and strong tongue. The ability to adhere to any surface and the ability to psionically converse with amphibians as a result of his mutation. His strange mutation rarely gets him anywhere good, and when he joined the X-Men, he was assigned to be the janitor. Toad is playing up strange no matter how he is presented, from the movies to the animation. For all the young ones watching, really hoping and praying to be a mutant, being able to stick out your freakishly long tongue and catch flies isn't what they had in mind. Maggot Japheth, the youngest of five siblings, never quite grew at the same rate as his older siblings. He had awful stomach aches and needed to eat a particular diet. Doctors told little Japheth that his awful stomach aches were caused by cancer, so he left his small South African town at the age of 12 to commit himself, rather than deplete his family's funds with medical treatment. He ended up in the Kalahari Desert, where he was discovered and saved by Magneto who assisted in the discovery of the boy's ailment. Two slug-like critters that dwelt within the boy's guts, which he later called Eni and Meanie. With a nickname like Maggot, you know this X-Man isn't only cool with his weird ability, but also proud of it. Maggot's mutation involves two slug-like techno-organic critters that live in his digestive tract and eat for him. These slugs, Eni and Meanie, can consume anything and do so quickly, 
They return to Maggot's body after eating, enter his abdomen, and deliver the energy from the food to him. Maggot turns blue and gains better strength and durability as a result of this. He uses telepathy to command his clever dining companions. You have to respect the ingenuity here. It almost sounds like something that nature would come up with, but watching it unfold is bizarre. If you're someone who gets the ick when looking at worms, maggots, slugs, or any such creepy crawlings that have no skeleton, then this one will really creep you out. Many even find Maggot downright disgusting, and while we sympathize with his mutation, we can totally see why. The Brood The broods are insectoids on the lookout for hosts to infest with their progeny as they traverse through space. It's a specialized race that's developed to reproduce and eat whatever resources are available. They are a thousand-year-old race who have lived in the Milky Way since at least 2620 BC. They are thought to have originated in another universe and are the universe's first natural predators, having been studied by the Kree and establishing nests on hundreds of worlds throughout the galaxy. Although it appeared that some brood were left behind and stranded in the area between the universes, the brood arrived in the reality of Earth-616 through the dark matter flow of a collapsing universe. They were abducted by the Kree Empire along with other hive species when they arrived so that they might be weaponized and used against enemy civilizations. The Empress Brood is the top leader of Brood civilization, which is made up of clans commanded by queens. They aren't simply cruel, they take pleasure in inflicting pain on others, particularly the horror their infection induces in its victims, and have been compared to demons as a result. Because they have endoskeletons and exoskeletons, the Brood are extremely resistant. Their tentacles are long enough to move items over a wide variety of distances. They employ their teeth and stingers in battle, which can deliver either paralyzing or lethal venom. The queens have the power to implant Brood embryos in other beings, while the Sleezoids have wings that allow them to fly. Telepathy allows the queen to converse with their offspring, even over interplanetary distances. Another one for all the people who hate insects. Wide enough to make your skin crawl indeed. Inplay, Ambassador Cartier St. Croix, a wealthy former head of various firms from Monaco, and his wife a descendant of Algerian aristocracy, have a son named Marius St. Croix. He was born in the Algerian city of Algiers. He was overtaken by a hunger so strong when his mutant powers first showed that he killed his mother. After their father, who was grieving, threw him out, Marcus sought more power through the Nether Realm's evil arts. Marius was subsequently sent to another world, where he was subjected to excruciating torture by mysterious beings. Marius had to get a respirator to help him breathe because of the abuse. Implate had to sustain himself, therefore he would travel to our plane of reality on a regular basis, fueled by the marrow of the prisoner penance. Marius discovered that if he did not eat mutant marrow on a regular basis, he would be stuck in the other dimension again, and each time he was pushed back, the length of his stay grew longer. Implate uses his feeder mouths on his hands to steal mutant energy from mutant's bone marrow. The victim dies if he drains all of a person's energy. This energy is required for Implate to survive. It's unclear how often he needs to eat. When he feeds on a victim, he eliminates their abilities and duplicates them for himself. As a result, he adopts some of their characteristics. He gets permanent power after many feedings. His appearance, on the other hand, is peculiar. Implate's skin is almost as tough as diamonds, indicating that he had been siphoning power from penance for a long time, making him very immune to physical strikes. He had the appearance of a dry, emaciated corpse, with purple artillery-like veins running throughout his body. He also has gray skin, blazing red pupils, and long, stiff strands of hair. Weird, right? Marrow Marrow is one of the more experienced mutants on the roster having debuted in 1995's X-Men Prime as Murloc's basement dweller. These mutants carved out a life for themselves underground, hidden from the prying eyes of humanity. The former Morlock who became an X-Men, and then an X-Force member, is a little rough around the edges. Morrow's mutant talent permits her to grow bones faster than normal. Her bones protrude from her like huge quills. She eventually gained control over the size and length of the extra bones, which she then broke off and used as weapons. By enveloping herself in it, she can even use it as a type of protective shielding or armor. She can create knuckle guards, spears, blades, rigid tendrils, bone claws, both fingernail and knuckle protrusions, and even projectile spikes with her power. Sarah had more control over her protrusions when she was using Weapon X. She could conceal them to make them appear normal, allowing her to create more complicated shapes with a greater grade, similar to ivory. Sarah had regained entire control over her power after regaining it under Volga's power restorative bestowal experimentation, potentially even enhancing it at the cost of her sanity. Meryl not only had enough control over her powers to appear more human, 
but she could also push them to new limits. She's basically an oversized porcupine. All credits to Rogue for the description, which is both cool and strange. Her mutation had to include a hyperaccelerated metabolism, healing factor, and two hearts to pump enough blood through her body due to the overproduction of bone. For X-Men Evolution, Meryl was imagined as Spike, who grew increasingly strange and joined the Morlock. From the Brotherhood of Mutants to X-Force, she's been a member of practically every mutant group. Spike was never in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. She is frequently eclipsed by her adolescent, hip counterpart. Skin Angelino Espinoza grew up in the South Central Los Angeles ghetto. Torres, his girlfriend, joined the gang. Torres and her companions picked up Angelo for a night of cruising, but it escalated into a drive-by shooting. Angelo's powers manifested as a result of the incident stress, and he passed out. When he awoke, the automobile was on fire, and Torres was nowhere to be found. A homeless man attempted to grab Angelo's wallet, but the automobile exploded as Angelo fled, killing the man. Angelo Espinoza was ruled legally dead when his wallet was discovered on the unidentified body of a homeless man. No one knew about this and assumed he was gone. Angelo had to flee town in order to keep his mutation a secret. Skin's moniker alone suggests he'll be one of the more bizarre mutants, which he is. Angelo Espinoza is the X-Men's Mr. Fantastic, or Stretch Armstrong if you choose. Skin has an extra 4-6 to six feet of elastic skin available to him. He can use the excess flesh to compress, grab, swing, wrap, and probably even jump rope with it. It's cool, but it's filthy as Quicksilver may say. When Skin isn't on duty and he can't keep all of his skin hidden, it all comes out and hangs out. Despite his skin condition, the man has a normal skeleton, which means his expanded limbs aren't as frail or restricted. To make matters worse, his skin has a sickening gray color. He sticks out like a sore, gray thumb, and it definitely does not help that his skin hangs loose even when he has not activated his powers. Glob Herman Robert Glob Herman is one of the X-Men team's most transparent mutants, literally. Glob's bizarre mutation includes a see-through wax coating that reveals all of his inside organs, also known as bioparaffin or a living wax. Because of the wax, he is extremely combustible, which he makes use of when necessary. Glob's strange condition makes him stick out like a sore, transparent thumb, while mutants like Rogue bemoan their talents. It's strange to have a translucent pink slime body that reveals every bone and organ inside. Glob Herman initially appeared as a student at the Xavier Institute in X-Men 2001, and he was a big bully. Glob was raised by a father who despised mutants, and a mother who believed in them. Glob's father began lashing out at him once he mutated, treating him as a target for his rage. After Professor X was officially exposed to be a mutant, his mother slipped him out of the house one night and took him to Westchester, where he was abandoned. As a result, this person hasn't had it easy, but he can rely on his enhanced super strength, durability, and speed. Glob was enrolled in Zorn's special class when he first joined the Xavier Institute, which may come as no surprise. He once attempted to take over the Earth alongside Kid Omega, but was set ablaze instead. Herman was one of the few mutants who survived the events of M-Day, later enrolling in the Jean Grey School and then the Hellfire Academy. In recent years, he's managed to modify his nasty ways, but he's still a grumpy curmudgeon when it comes to doing good guy work. If my body was a pink goose slime, I'd be just as sour. Stacy X. Miranda was in a trailer park in Texas and was a popular student until her mutant abilities were revealed. With no job skills and little money, she had no choice but to turn to sex work to make her ends meet. She took advantage of her mutant talents on the streets and subsequently when Madame Drash of the X Ranch scouted her. The mutant hating Church of Humanity's congregates and leaders soon attacked and burned down the mutant's brothel. She was saved by the X Men when they arrived. That is when Stacy became a member of the X-Men. Stacy is a skilled fighter with some martial arts skills who can take on Wolverine and defeat him while laughing. However, that is not why she is on the list in the first place. Stacy X is hypersensitive to pheromones. She secretes her own pheromones when she comes into contact with another person's skin, allowing her to activate body function in others, causing organs, vomiting, nausea, and rectal problems among other things. When Radius's force field neutralized her pheromone control, this power was seen to act similarly to Rogue's absorption power. She can speed up the healing process for others and improve their stamina so they don't tire out so quickly, giving her teammates adrenaline rushes. She gained the ability to launch her pheromones into the air and influence individuals without making direct contact after regaining her powers. Her snake-like scaly skin is difficult to not notice and it provides her with an unknown level of resilience. With that, we come to the end of this list of weird mutants. Who is your favorite among them? Let us know in the comments below. Come on, come on, come on, we're burning daylight here. Scramble a remote crew. We're going live.